And then our third speaker, I'm very happy to have Grace's own uh, Dr. Vivette Henry as our third speaker. Vivette is an assistant professor of psychology at Tyndale University and has worked in the mental health arena for over 16 years. She brings a wealth of clinical experience in the, in the fields of psychology, counseling, and education. And she's played a significant role in designing and delivering training uh, in lay counseling, evangelism, discipleship, and leadership to church leaders and workers within evangel evangelical church communities. Um, as we seek to survive and thrive beyond this pandemic, Vivette uh, will be guiding us in these next few minutes on a journey that will provide useful general information about our mental health and how to care for ourselves and others along the way. We hope that you will all find the journey to be a valuable one and gain understanding about your mental state. The hope is that we will all realize um, the fact that we can take control of our own mental health and thrive in spite of the situations that we face. Vivette, thank you so much for being here and please uh, take it away. Thank you, Caleb. And um, it is a pleasure to be here and thanks to everyone who's in attendance. I wanna say special hello to those from across the sea in Jamaica. Thank you for making the time. Now, um, as we begin, we could all consider that each topic that's discussed tonight and each subtopic could be a seminar in and of itself. So our efforts here is really just for a general overview, just so that you get some information. So I hope it will be very practical for you. I wish to start by pointing us to the Bible in Philippians 4 verses 4 to 9. And I'd like to say thanks in advance to um, the help that I'm getting from our tech person to advance the slides. Thank you very much. Now we might be familiar with this portion of scripture, uh, Philippians 4, 4 to 9. And in this scripture, it gives us a framework in keeping with our theme that directs us in a way of being, a way of thinking and a way of behaving that is meant to soothe our mental state. In verse four, I've underlined the key areas. We are encouraged to rejoice in the Lord always, because of course, even within a pandemic, there can be very little things to rejoice about. So we are directed to rejoice in the Lord. In verse six, we are told, don't be anxious, Tell the Lord what's on your mind. Go to him prayerfully and with thanksgiving and let him know what's going on. And his peace in Christ will calm your mind and your heart in, in Christ Jesus. And verse 8 tells us that whatever is true and honorable, all the good stuff, it speaks to a positive way of thinking that we should try to engage in within our minds, our thoughts so that that positivity will move through in our being. And finally, we are encouraging verse nine to practice the good things that we have learned. Um, we know that practice makes perfect. So eventually we help to create a way of life, a lifestyle. So these verses we keep in mind as we go through, but then we have help, we have human help along with the spiritual health. So when we consider this framework from Philippians, it points us to a cognitive behavioral approach that is used in therapy. So it's there all along. It's a way of managing your thoughts, your behaviors, and all of that that will help to manage your mental health and well-being. Next slide, please. So on our journey tonight, we will be looking at defining and normalizing mental health. We'll also be examining um, mental health during the pandemic. We have talked a bit about it uh, with Susan and Sam, and we'll just touch on that a little bit more. And we'll be looking at self-care during and beyond the pandemic because we, we want to be around and in good, in good form when this is all over. Next slide, please. So I'll ask you the question, 
what do the words mental health bring to your mind? Of course, our experiences would determine what comes to mind, but I've put some examples here. We might think of mental illness, depression, anxiety, medications, and other things. So mental health stirs up a number of things that we're gonna take a bit of a look at. Next slide, please. And I'm gonna ask you to think of mental health as a funnel. The funnel has some items, some important items in it. So there you have that funnel that tells us that mental health and mental illness, we keep that in mind over everything. They are two different things. They're interrelated, but they are two different things. So that's over everything with that funnel. And then we know that mental health relates to everybody. We also keep in mind that we can conceptualize or picture mental health on a continuum from good to bad at each end and in between you have various states. And finally, we're gonna consider the mind-body connection. The fact that there is a link between our minds and our physical bodies and well-being. So let's elaborate. Next slide will show us the difference between mental health and mental illness. Mental health is the state of well being or wellness related to our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions of reality. So, as was said, it's on a continuum. And mental illness relates to disturbances in these thoughts, feelings, and perceptions of reality. You might have disturbances in these and you do not have a mental illness, you might be affected by stress. But then in the most severe of cases, you might have a mental illness, you might have depression, you might have evidence of schizophrenia, serious mental illnesses that speak to disturbances in these three areas. Next slide, please. Now, as we look at defining and normalizing mental health, we must keep in mind that we are the first line of defense of care for ourselves. We all have mental health to maintain. We all are vulnerable to these disturbances. So there should be no stigma associated, no us and them, because Apart from the grace of God, we could be that person out there who is severely mentally ill. Also, let's remember the mind-body connection, the fact that a physical illness and mental illness can have connection. For example, we can have problems during the pandemic with loss of job, loss of income and our stress and worrying about paying our bills, eating right, which is important, and so on, that causes us to have high blood pressure, which is a physical illness. And it works the other way too. A cancer diagnosis can cause us to become depressed. We worry what's gonna happen. How are we gonna manage through this? So the mind-body connection these are important things to think about. Let's look at the next slide. So take some time to look at this continuum. We won't go through everything on it, but if you notice you have the good from good to bad, healthy to ill. And at the bottom of the boxes, you see the different actions that are recommended. When you are operating in a healthy way, you are managing your stress, you are managing what's coming at you in the pandemic and still operating in a relatively normal 
way and you seek to maintain your support system with that. When you come to reacting, it means that you are feeling it. You are getting a sense that this thing is affecting you. You're forgetting things. You're losing sleep. You're losing energy. You have headaches more often. You need to pay attention to those things. Know your limits with what's going on and maybe see if you are able to take a break, step back, do something because you know that negative things are happening. Seek support. And then in the orange zone, it's injured. That means something has definitely happened. You have definitely been affected. You might be seriously moving into the realm of depression. You are angry, not just feeling irritated, but you might have serious anger outbursts or serious anxiety issues. So there in the, in the bottom, you see where you need to find someone to talk to, you need to ask for help. And in the red zone, when you are ill, this is where you have serious mental health issues. This is where suicidal thoughts might come into the picture. Serious depressive symptoms are there. You can't sleep well, you can't eat well, or you're overdoing those things. Panic attacks are numerous. These are cases where action, professional action, must come into being. So think of where you are on this continuum and know that this context, this seminar is meant to help to address wherever you are on it. Next slide, please. Manifestations of good health would have been, some of them would have been seen in your green box just before. So this just has a few listed on the screen before you. You have a healthy sense of self. You have a sense of purpose. You can plan your life. Your relationships are going well. Your connections are going well. Resilience speaks of your being able to deal with the things that come to you, the problems that come and you recover in good time and you generally are enjoying life. Let's move on. So when we think of our mental health, we consider some important factors. Uh, there are lots of factors, but these are just a few. And let's look at the realm of biology. Neurotransmitters or brain chemicals come into play. And these are like dopamine, serotonin, when these are off balance, you have um, behaviors that are out of sync with what is normal. And in severe cases, you have mental illnesses like, like um, depression, you have schizophrenia, you have serious, serious issues with um, perhaps bipolar disorder when you have chemical imbalances. And then you have endorphins. Endorphins are brain chemicals or neurotransmitters that make you feel good. They mimic the opioids. They are nature's opioids. So when you exercise, these are released and you feel like whatever is before you, you can conquer it. And then there are hormones. These chemicals are in the blood and they too have bearing on how our brain reacts and how our mental state is maintained. Then we have the genetic aspect of it. Some of us have genetic predisposition for certain mental illnesses. And so even though we are predisposed, these might not be activated if the conditions are not present, as well as they may be activated because of the conditions that surround you. So these are biological aspects to keep in mind. We know too that physical illnesses and the medications that we take do affect our mental health. They are very, very important to bear in mind. Events, of course, like a pandemic, they do affect how your mind functions and the health of it. Uh, loss, death, sickness, these are things that affect you. And of course, the people that you deal with. 
insensitive people, abusive people can trigger certain illnesses within individuals. And finally on this list, a perceived sense of control. When humans, when we have a sense of control over our lives, we can plan, we can have a sense of purpose, we can move forward. Within this pandemic, many persons have lost that sense of control. Everything seems to be taken away from them. And that presents a problem and it becomes difficult to deal with it. And so the mental health of those individuals becomes compromised. Let's move on. So let's talk a little bit about what happens out of our control within this pandemic. A major theme within it is that loss element. And many of us can relate to that. There is a sense of loss, a loss of basic things, your job, your income. There's a loss of community, that isolation, you can't connect with those you love. The young people can't connect with their friends. Young people are part of the population that's suffering a great deal now from mental health issues and even suicidal thoughts. You are unable to connect with your loved ones. And then there's the matter of loss via illness, with COVID illness, you seem to be difficult, having difficulty recovering. And then there is death. So it's a grieving process because these things are happening out of your control. And that would take a whole other seminar to talk about grief and loss. So when we see the signs, we have to act on it when we are breaking under the pressure of all of these things. Let's move on. So some of our danger signs were mentioned on the continuum, but here are a few that are very common and they are in keeping with depression, which is extremely common during these times. There's withdrawal from others, feelings of isolation, anxiety, eating problems, sleeping problems, headaches. These are key signs that we need to take note of. Next slide, please. Within the context of this stressed state and depression among others, we find that self-medication by the use of alcohol and drugs become a common practice. When we use it to numb the pain and the feelings that we have, we call it self-medicating. And this is a very, very important sign. Hopelessness sets in and suicidal ideation steps in and we need to, to act. This is professional help um, that's needed at this point. Next slide. So we come to the matter of self-care as we, as we wrap up. And we know that self-care isn't being selfish. If you don't take care of yourself, then you won't be able to take care of anybody else. And we note in the scriptures in the Bible, it tells us that Christ went to a solitary place early in the morning and he prayed. He sought to be connected to the Father and he also sought to refresh himself. So our self-care, those activities, we can take control of them. They are not out of our control. And we remember too that we are not one dimensional beings. We are connected, our minds, our bodies, what we do, how we interact, the events that face us all impact us as a solitary being. Next slide, please. So our choices, these are just a few. Establish healthy routines and connections that will nurture your spiritual and social life. Know when and where to seek professional help. That means you need to know the signs within yourself 
and within your children and others with whom you interact. Get help, know where to get help and keep your brain actively engaged. Learn a skill, read a book, get into some activity. And remember your activity must always be healthy and minimize the intake of toxic information. Cut down on the news about death and um, dying and loss that you take in. Minimize your time on social media. These are all useful mediums, but you know that it can be overdone if you take in too much toxicity. Next slide, please. So this is just a visual of what we have just gone through. One, unplug from media, achieve balance in your life. Two, physical distancing, does that mean being alone? Three, know that you're not alone. This seminar is telling you that that's the case. Four, you know it isn't easy. We know it's not easy, so hashtag, it's okay to not be okay. Don't be all super spiritual and say you're all right and you'll just pray about it. God provided people to help and knowledge that will be helpful. And five, take care of your body, stay active. Final slide. summarizes it all. And I hope that you take this away, that our mental health is our responsibility. We are the first line of defense for ourselves. And self-care and helping others involve knowing the signs and knowing how to act on it. And of course, helping others help us too. And focusing on situations we can control, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, we will be acting with futility. And finally, imitate Christ with respect to self-care. He took care of himself and we should do so too. So that's it. Be nice to yourself. Thank you very much.